In this video, we're going to be testing out the best low profile GPU that you can buy right now for a small form factor gaming rig. And when I say best, I mean, it's not a thousand dollar card like some of the other low profiles on the market. So it's not going to completely break the bank. And through my testing, this is a great performing low profile GPU. What we've got here is the all new NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5060 Low Profile Overclock Edition from Gigabyte. And I've been wanting to get my hands on this since it was announced. It's using the same exact form factor as last year's RTX 4060 Low Profile. So we've got a triple fan design here. Unfortunately, it's not a single slot low profile card. It's a dual slot card and it does require one eight pin PCIe connector. I mean, basically just like that low profile RTX 4060. And again, same form factor. So if you've already got a build over there, you could just slam this right in. And I've been really excited about this card. So we're going to do some testing here. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft. But the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $22.88. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. This card does come pre-installed with a full-size bracket, but they also include this low-profile bracket and some hardware, so I've already installed it here. And when it comes to the overall specs, we have 8 gigs of GDDR7 running at a 128-bit bus, a core clock of 2,512 MHz, 3,840 CUDA cores. It supports PCIe Express 5.0. They recommend a 550-watt power supply, and it's only 182 millimeters long. The rig that I'm going to be testing in is a small form factor build I did a while ago, and I'm actually just pulling out the low profile RTX 4060 from Gigabyte and putting this right in place. What we've got here is a Minus Forum all-in-one motherboard. It's the 7945HX 3D, so we've got 16 cores, 32 threads, 32 gigs of RAM, a 550 watt power supply. The case is a cheaper one from Amazon, but I've got an even smaller case that I'm gonna be building in in the next few days. So keep an eye out on the channel, just waiting on a couple more parts. And I'm kind of trying to decide what CPU to use with this setup, but the RTX 5060 low profile should fit in here just fine. Okay, so like I mentioned with this test rig, we've got that AMD Ryzen 9 7945HX 3D. Uh, it's that Menace Forum board. 32 gigs of DDR5 at 52, and with this board, uh, we can only get up to 52, even though it's 5,600 mega transfers per second. Still not bad for what we've got here. But of course, the main thing we're going to be testing here is the low profile GeForce RTX 5060. Would be nice to have at least 12 gigs with something like this, but they're only offering an 8 gig variant. And so far at 1440p, it's been performing really well here. Now, the first thing I wanted to show you here was uh, just the TGP on this thing. I've got Furmark. And right here, 145 watts, we've got that single 8-pin PCIe connector. And uh, if I open up, let's say, um, GPU Tweak 3, you could also use Afterburner if you want to. We can set the power target up just a bit, only to 103%. I was actually hoping to be able to go up to 110 with this. Now, it's still early, and I'm not sure if maybe Afterburner and GPU Tweak will allow us to go up to 110 later on. But at the time I'm making this video, 103. We can do some overclocking, but I'm going to leave it like this. And you can see, it does up to 150 watts. This low-profile card has been the best that I've been able to test so far, and I know it's a low-profile dual slot. But, you know, if you were thinking about a single slot with this setup, I'd say one of the best on the market right now, at least for the price point, is going to be an RTX 3050 from Yeston. Doesn't require any extra power, but it can't come close to what this RTX 5060 is putting out. Now it's time to jump into some benchmarks, and then we're going to get right into some gaming. 
Checking out the OpenCL score here with Geekbench 6, coming in with a 119,716. And I've also pulled the OpenCL list from over on the website. As you can see, right down at the very bottom, we've got the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060, and this thing's coming well ahead of it. And uh, it's even coming ahead of the RTX 3080 Ti laptop GPU, and I completely understand that it's a laptop GPU, but I thought that this was really impressive. Moving over to 3D Mark, on this system here, we got a total score of 13,564. And remember, we've got that 16 core, 32 thread CPU. It's a mobile CPU and a mini ITX form factor. And the last time I tested that low profile GeForce RTX 4060, that was paired up with the Ryzen 7 9700K. And we came ahead of that, even though our CPU score over on that 9700K was well ahead of what we have here with this mobile X3D chip. But if you take a look at the graphics score, we're a little over 13,000 with the RTX 5060 and just a bit over 10,000 with the RTX 4060. I also ran Port Royal just to kind of get an idea of ray tracing performance. Total score here, 8,519. FPS, 39.44. And finally, Steel Nomad with a 3,157. FPS of 31.57. All in all, given that this is a low profile card, really impressed here by the synthetic scores we're seeing out of this, but now it's time to jump into some real world gaming. Here's Cyberpunk 2077 1440p Ultra with DLSS4 set to quality. And just to show you that we're using these settings here, we'll move over to Ultra and I will have to turn on DLSS here. We'll go to quality. We'll apply this and we're at 1440 with it. And with these settings, it's a very enjoyable experience, seeing an average of around 92 FPS with this game. And if you needed more out of it, you could always take DLSS to balanced or performance. Remember with DLSS 4, I mean, it looks a lot better than older models. This is using the transformer model. So we've got the DLSS 4 enabled here. And even at 1440 performance mode, it still looks great. And it's gonna dramatically increase that frame rate. And I'll tell you what, when the RTX 5000 series cards were launched, the one that I was most excited about was the RTX 5060, which we have here. I was hoping for a low profile version, mainly for frame generation. And I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like Bay frames, but the one thing to keep in mind here is we're not using a $2,000 RTX 5090. With something like that, we shouldn't have to use any kind of frame generation. But with a lower end, small form factor build like this, enabling DLSS4 multi-frame gen works absolutely amazingly. And now with those same settings, the only thing we did here was enable multi-frame generation at X4. We're now seeing an average of 180 FPS with this game. But again, you don't need multi-frame generation because we were well over 60 FPS with this game at 1440 Ultra. And this is actually the only game we're gonna be using frame gen with in this video. Next one I wanted to test was Marvel Rivals, 1440p Ultra with DLSS4 set to quality. Looking great, seeing an average of around 102 FPS even in battle. I did see it jump up to 120. I've got it locked at 120, uh, V-Sync's on. But once we're in battle, I mean, it's gonna dip on down, as you can see from Afterburner up to the top left-hand corner. Next up, Borderlands 3, 1440 Ultra. And uh, I guess I didn't play enough to kind of get all of the, the uh, shaders cached. I do wish this had an option to cast shaders before you started it, because as you can see in some areas, when we have like new particle effects on screen, we get those stutters. And this is something that's been ongoing with this game for quite some time. Spider-Man 2 was another one that I wanted to test here. And right now we're at 1440, very high with DLSS 4 set to quality. This is about it. If you take a look at Afterburner, you can see our VRAM is right there. I mean, we're getting up to that eight gigs. That's all we've got with this low profile RTX 5060. And to tell you the truth, I mean, this is all you need. We're not using frame gen. And if you wanted to use that, it's gonna add about 60 FPS on top of what we're seeing right now. You know, I had to test out Forza Horizon 5. We're at 1440p Extreme Plus. And by Extreme Plus, uh, once we go to the Extreme preset, there's still a few options that we can turn up. I've got everything maxed out with this game. No DLSS, we're not using FSR. 1440, over 170 FPS on average. And I wanted to go up to 4K with it at Extreme Plus, but the best way to play this on this eight gig card at 4K would be 4K Ultra settings. 
and with it set up like that, an average of 93 FPS. So we're good to go with this game, it's not going to be an issue for the RTX 5060. And the final game I wanted to test was Doom the Dark Ages. We're at 1440, high, DLSS set to quality, and the only reason I went to high is because once you're changing settings here, shows you how much VRAM you're going to be using, and at Ultra, it's going to take us over that 8 gigs. So I dropped it down to high, which is around 7 gigs used, and it's still great. I do think that it would run at Ultra, but I just wanted to go right here because it still looks awesome at 1440. Overall, really impressed by the performance of this low profile RTX 5060. When it comes to pricing, these are going for around 340 when people aren't scalping them. On Newegg right now, at the time I'm making this video, it's 339, so it is a bit more expensive. But if you want to build small form factor, you've been doing it for a while, you know how expensive it can get for these low profile cards. I personally don't think that this is a horrible deal given, you know, the lack of low profile cards on the market right now. But I know a big question that some people are going to ask is, should they upgrade to the low profile RTX 5060 from the RTX 4060? And my personal answer would be no. We still have frame generation over there. Still a great performing card. And I mean, it hasn't been out too long. But if you're looking to build small form factor and you can fit a dual slot card with an 8-pin PCIe connector, I do think that this is one of the best choices on the market. Again, I've got an even smaller form factor build coming up. I'm trying to decide what CPU I'm going to be using. That video will be out, I'd say, in three to four days, so keep an eye out on the channel. If you're interested in learning a little more about the low-profile RTX 5060 or thinking about picking one up, I will leave some links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. And like always, thanks for watching.